before the Valandians, before Sturgeon, even the Empire, Caradia was sometimes referred to as the Green Wastelands. Hordes of forest covered the land, carpeted in wood and a shadow of what it is today. The Empire hadn't conquered all. The Sturgeons hadn't raided from the north to capture vast areas of land, and the Valandians hadn't broken off from their masters to create their own clans. There was no outside threat, just one people, one group, the Batanians. The Batanians ruled the land, the first to come and settle in Caradia, and many say will be the last to leave after all the war and bloodshed ends, if it ever does. These people were not one united faction, they didn't have the legions like the Empire, or the warlords like the Sturgeons, or the Tundra hordes like the Cusades. The Batanians were many tribes, they had split over centuries of skirmish and friction. Alliances could be made and broken within months, lands taken and then stolen back in a matter of days. Being small warring tribes, the Batanians would often pillage and loot neighbouring villages, not only for goods but just for the joy of it. Whilst they idolise valour, they aren't strangers to mischief from time to time, going on night raids to take whatever they desire, and through this came a skill that they could use in later battles to come, when they came. The others. Soon the simple life became the survival life. When the empire came, the tribes couldn't carry on their primitive ways, some banding together, some joining the enemy, and some scattering completely forming more cohesive groups to defend their lands from the outside invasions of the Empire and their Valandian mercenaries. Battle after battle fought, the Empire gained more land, capturing more settlements and the Batanians were losing their towns, their homes. They soon realised that taking the Empire's legionaries out in open battle wasn't possible, or at least not probable. So they utilised guerrilla warfare. Their experience of night raids and mischief of stealing and looting gave them the much needed skills to ambush passing patrols, send scouting parties to empire camps to call for opportune attacks, and using scorched earth tactics to slow the invaders. Sure enough, soon they started to regain their land. The battalions passed and forest dwellers honed their skills in hunting and strength. With wild savages dressed in very little armour, ambushing passing soldiers with their great foxes, and longbowmen used better than any other, keeping the enemy at a distance and finding their target with acute precision. The Empire were no longer the only powerhouse in Caradia. The Batanian King, Caladoc, he was a colourful figure. Yes, he was ruthless in battle, yet had somewhat of a wicked sense of humour, taking prisoners from fleeing Valandian soldiers, then cutting their throats just for the enjoyment. But he was strong, uniting tribes for a common enemy. Yet not all the tribes were so happy to comply. The Wolfskins were young warriors, eager to prove themselves, yet taking no advice from anyone but themselves. Wanting a life of freedom from the ropes of vassalage, yet not shying away from war or violence. Staying true to their name as wolves, eating raw meat, sleeping wherever they stood in the forest and wearing no woven cloth. Almost seeming themselves exempt from the laws of men. There were often stories of cattle going missing in the night, being found the next day slumped in the forest with teeth marks of humans on their carcass. Whilst brutal, the wolfskins are not alone. Batania is a strong force not to be reckoned with, but also the neighbouring tribes, using their name and ideals, prove to be a real threat to anyone that wanders a bit too close to the deep dark forests of Karadia. And that is where your story begins as an adventurer, thrust into a world of survival or thriving to become the Batanian Warlord. With longbows and numerous javelins in your arsenal, it's imperative that you use guerrilla warfare throughout your playthrough, as these soldiers, whilst they can and will fight, often results in battles can be swayed by just that one well-timed ambush. Utilising terrifying infantry to scare the enemy into submission, or if all else fails, dismember them with a sharpened two-hand axe and a sword. The Batanians are of course based off the Celtic people of Western Europe. The Picts, the Irish and the Welsh, using a mix of mythology and history to create a warring nation of tribes and savages. Whilst technologically inferior to the likes of the Empire or Valandians, the Batanians are not people to be sniffed at. With large forts that have stood for centuries and complex structures that even give the Empire's architects a run for their money, the Batanians, although do have weakness, 
the cavalry can be outmatched by pretty much all but the Sturgeons, and their infantry, if caught in open battle, can somewhat prove to be outplayed by many of the heavier opponents. Yet the battalions do have some tricks up their sleeves. For example, their oath sworn that can even put legionaries to the test, with javelins, large shields, heavy axes and swords, and even spears in defense of cavalry or strong formation fighting. You will also experience many of the other minor tribes throughout Britannia, more than a lot of the other factions you'll find throughout the world, all having their different ideals and way of war, but really under the name of the Britannians. They had a life of simplicity, but they were thrust into the fires of war. Men, women and even children fighting to defend their homes and take back what the Empire took from them setting up ambushes and using raids to gain a foothold in the ever-moving land of Karadia. Will the battalions regain and grow as a power in the wake of the Empire, or will they fall along with the rest? That is for only you to decide. After the news of Bannerlord's release date moving forward today, the giveaway for the game is nearly over. So make sure you enter by clicking the link in the description or the pinned comment on this video. But stay tuned for tomorrow as I bring you the Azurai in all their form and prowess. If you missed my lore videos on the Empire and Volandia, there's a playlist with them all on my channel, so go and check them out. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like the video for future content like this, and until then, I'll see you in the next one.